folks. So how is your spring going? Uh, it's supposed to come back again tomorrow, right? But uh, the last couple days, ice in the pond, my ducks all took off, and uh, it was so cold. How cold was it? Some of my flowers, you know how flowers, you know, early flowers? It got some of my flowers. Yeah, not the daffodils, but anyway. Um, I, I think that was the last grasp of winter, right? I hope so. The last grasp of winter. I hope so. So um, we'll be here next week. By the way, uh, some of the guys said they'd like to go back into sanctuary for Monday, Thursday. Is that, that yeah. did they say anything to you? Yeah. yeah, so they said they wouldn't mind moving to pews. They'd like to be back in the sanctuary. So Monday, Thursday, and then after that, we'll be back in the uh, living room. Okay, back in the morning Thursday. Just don't have the morning Thursday. You don't have to move to that. I did have the communion service. We have yeah. Thursday. Remind Bruce this week. I like the last supper. Yeah. How to differentiate it from Holy Thursday. I don't know why. I, I just asked the exact that. same question. What's the big deal about not calling it Holy Thursday? It's Holy Thursday. It was, I always thought it was Holy why Thursday. Why do you got to call it Monday? Because that's what. That's what does Monday mean? What does Monday mean? I don't know. I've never heard of it. We're having a get, check Dr. Google. We're having quite a discussion. I've never heard of it. So anyway, while you're doing that, as you know, the last couple weeks, I've been sharing tips on how to economize. Tips on how to economize for two reasons. Number one, dealing with $4, $4.50 gasoline, might be even higher than that if you're Matthew back here buying the high test. Uh, and of course, 7.9% inflation, that was the last figure I heard on inflation, because everything's, everything costs more because it's gotta be transported, whatever. But secondly, is we're looking record. to uh, receive funds for Ukraine relief. These four, over four million refugees now, and something like half of them are children. And it's usually, it's pretty much mothers and children, or maybe grandparents, because the, the dads and the brothers have to stay home and defend the homeland. Uh, but two million of them are in Poland. And there are Christian organizations there and other relief organizations, so uh, we have been looking to raise funds for Ukraine relief. Do I have to explain what this means? Ukraine relief. Uh, so I won't say who it was, but somebody said, well, I don't understand the sign. Well, give to Ukraine relief does that, or support Ukraine relief. Does that, does that, I just try to not have as many, too many le letters on it. You know? You get it? You get it? So um, Bowman Signs did this for me, Ukraine relief. And we got one, the flag over here, and we got another sign, please. That's more explicit, please help. Yeah. Ukraine. Okay, so tips on economizing. All right. Would you like the meaning of Monday? Yes. yes. What is the meaning yeah, of Monday? Wait, hold on, guys. The word Monday comes from the Latin. Yeah. Latin. Mandatum or command, which refers to the instructions Jesus gave his disciples at the Last Supper. Do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. Thank you for that Latin know, lesson. Us Catholics remember it as Holy Saturday. So, <laughs> I was thinking Latin, that would be the Catholic term. Right. I, I took Latin and I didn't know what that we got, we got a lively crowd tonight. So, back to tips on economizing. So far, I've covered tips on saving on gasoline and driving, tips on bought purchases like paper goods that we all need these things and going to use them. Last week, tips on grocery shopping. And tonight, we're going to do some general tips to save. And if you can think of something when I'm done that I haven't said that you want to suggest, those of you here, or if you're online, you want to let us know through uh, Facebook, you can do that. So, number one, and Kathy mentioned this the first week, forego expensive coffee. For going, the reason it's called Starbucks, the reason it's called Starbucks is it's four, five, six, seven dollars for a burnt flavored tasting coffee. Okay? So McDonald's, Burger King, Cumberland Farms, they all have dollar coffee. 
Newtown Deli up the Deli. street. I just got this for a buck. A buck. He got. Where'd you get it? Newtown Deli. Up Newtown the Deli. Right see. So you oh, can get coffee. Way. You can get coffee for a buck somewhere. Um, okay. Or better yet, you can make a pot at home. Or with the pat pods, you can probably make a cup of coffee for fifty cents or less. All right. So that's number one. Forego expensive. Now I know my daughter. My daughter is hooked on Dunkin' Donuts. She says, Dad, it just doesn't taste the same. Oh, well, poor girl. Got to have her Dunkin'. Yes, you know, I, I should have bought Dunkin' stock long before I did. Absolutely. But anyway, forego expensive coffee. Number two, don't eat out. You got the cost of the meal plus the tax and the tips. That's another 30-some percent, all right? But, but... If you do eat out for a special occasion, you got an anniversary or a wedding or something, you know, birthday, something. If you do, you don't have to order the most expensive thing on the menu. You don't have to order the filet mignon. Or go for the early bird special. You can get the early bird special. The other night, Deb and I were using one of those gift <laughs> cards. You know, people say to me, what can we give you? I say, listen, I got too much of everything. Uh, I say to my kids, you want to give me something? Mom likes to eat out, gift card to eat out. So we were going to one of our favorites, the Longhorn, you know. Ooh. And instead of the filet mignon or the, you know, top sirloin, we got the chopped beef steak, the chopped steak. The nice thing about it, it's ready chewed. You know, it's ready chewed. And uh, we ended up bringing enough home to have a second meal out of it. So you don't have to get the most expensive thing on the, on the menu. Uh, number four, do laundry at home. Skip the dry cleaners and the laundry. I used to get my shirts done. Now it's about buck ninety for get a shirt laundry. I remember when I first was in the clothing business, I could get a shirt laundry for twenty five cents. <laughs> I could. I could get a shirt, and I said, I can't. I can't bother to wash and iron just for twenty five cents. I'll just work the next hour. That'll pay for my shirts for the week. All right. Um, so anyway, uh, you can wash a lot of things. Uh, low cycle or by hand, um, and it's actually uh, the chemicals of dry cleaning, not, not good, so I, I'm big in, you can, you can wash a lot of things, there's a few things you can't, but there's a lot of things you can wash. You can air dry, saves on electricity, right? Uh, and by the way, I, my mother used to air dry a lot. Uh, the, the smell of something out fresh, unless the neighbor just spread the organic material, yeah, that wouldn't be a good time to do it. But uh, one other point that we learned at the village when we were getting ready to build the new shelter buildings and the city didn't have sewers up there. So to get approval, that, was, that took me my political skills to get that approved. But uh, we had to prove that our septic system could handle the extra. So uh, we had to like, so I had the staff just only do full loads of wash. Only do full loads of wash. Uh, instead of, you know, if you're doing a smaller load, uh, wait till you got a full load. And, uh, or if you done, just got to wash one or two things, you can hand wash. You ever go on a trip and you need some, you hand wash it, hang up in the bathroom overnight? You know, there's ways to do it. So those are some of my suggestions on how to save on expenses, spend less, have more to give. Anybody have one, something they want to add around tips on economizing? Yes, Matthew. Don't order by Uber Eats. <laughs> Don't order Uber oh, Eats. Spoken by a guy who spoken by a guy who delivers Uber Eats. I, I see a young gal at the gym I work at with who gets uh, her her meals delivered by Uber Eats, and I'm saying to myself. What are they paying these people working at the gym? Probably not a huge. And how much money is she paying the Uber driver in the meal? I can't she pack a lunch. The young people don't know how to do pack pack a lunch. Mm -mm. You know, I don't have to do to do that. You know. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah. But somebody had Matthew bring him a Starbucks by Uber Eats. Now you can. That was a real expensive coffee. Imagine that. It was a real. Yes, Suzanne. Um, well, my thought along your lines with the coffee. Definitely buy the coffee in the store. Like I hate going into Starbucks, but I love their coffee. You like that burnt flavor? Yeah. <laughs> I love European full 
Yeah. <laughs> Full body coffee. It tastes like it's burnt. Uh, well, uh, there's different ones that I like. And but I get twelve ninety nine. I get twenty ounce bag. Yeah. And it, it lasts me two weeks. There's ways to get the same flavor, but you're spending less. Yeah. And I really believe that the inflation number that they're quoting, remember that doesn't include, <clears throat> it's a CPI number that you're quoting. Consumer <clears throat> price index. Right. But the, it's a CPI core number, which is X food and energy. Yeah, and if you look at food gas. and energy are 18% above, if you're looking at meat and produce, and your uh, gas, which is included in the transportation of all your products, is closer to 40%. Yeah. So it, you, you really need to be aware of this stuff. So next week, I have one more of these, and I'm going to do my very favorite. I'm going to do my very favorite next week. So... Tune in again next week for my favorite way of saving money. All right? Maybe you can guess what it is. But uh, next week it'll be the last one and it'll be tips on that. Meanwhile, of course, we're doing all this to raise money for Ukraine relief. Just horrible what's happened uh, to that country. We're praying for a ceasefire. And, uh, you know, that's where it's got to start. And... Uh, the little jar here, people were putting money in it on Sunday. Uh, so you can put it in there, you can write a check. Uh, we have a $1,000 offer to a match that we want to take advantage of. Uh, so I'm hoping that by maybe Palm Sunday or Easter, Paula can give us an update of where we're at um, with this effort, okay? Okay, we're in John 17 tonight. John 17, it's one of the uh, shorter chapters just 25, 26 verses, and there are three parts to this, to this uh, chapter. <clears throat> First of all, as you're turning to it, it's Jesus' high priestly prayer. And he begins by praying for himself, and that's the shortest prayer, praying for himself. Then he prays for his disciples, and then he prays for all the other believers, and that includes us today. Look into the future all that would be followers. Pray for himself, pray for his disciples, and pray for all other believers. So I invite you to turn with us there, and let me open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you for this special season, time of the year. We call it Lent. I think as we approach Holy Week, especially as we're coming up on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and then, of course, Resurrection Sunday, Easter Sunday. Uh, we pray that during this time we might have a deeper sense and understanding of what our salvation cost and involved. May it lead to a uh, more useful and holy life. We also pray that uh, it would be a time of sharing uh, the good news and the gospel that Jesus died on the cross for people's sins. If they trust and believe they might have eternal life. And so may that sharing come across in our services, especially in the choir program, musical program on the 10th, Palm Sunday, Jesus Saves. And we ask your blessing upon us and that we might be a blessing. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So I had a funeral, by the way, on Tuesday. Uh, the lady that lived here in the neighborhood attended this church as a child and youth. Uh, she died on her birthday, 92 years old. I don't think it might almost 50 years of doing funerals, I ever had a funeral of somebody that died on their birthday. And you know, at 92 years old, usually you only have a few people um, because they outlived a lot of the contemporaries. But this lady had 14 grandchildren and 13 great-grandchildren. Cody was packed, standing room only, out in the hall. It was just amazing mm -hmm. the number of people that were, she lived over here on Welton Street which is where you're coming down Naugatuck, it splits. And uh, her husband was one of our police officers. Uh, and uh, her, two of her sons were also, they were on the police force uh, when, when I was on the commission. So it was good to see them again. They're now retired. But uh, it was just a, um, uh, quite a privilege to do her service. 92 years old, died on her birthday. That's really something anyway. But uh, just somebody that had 
connection some years ago uh, to, to this church and in the neighborhood. Okay, uh, John 17 begins by saying, verse 1, Jesus said this, after Jesus said this, he looked towards heaven and prayed. So, when you see after Jesus said this, you got to ask yourself, well, after what? After, after what? So, you go back to the verse before, and it says, I have told you these things, this is in chapter 16, the end of chapter 16, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart, I have overcome the world. So those are very good thoughts, how we can have peace. Also a reminder that in this world we're going to have trouble, but even in times of trouble, if we have Jesus, he's overcome the world, we can have, we can have peace even in the midst of the storm. So after having said that, now... He looks up towards heaven and he prayed. This is what Jesus prayed. Father, the time has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. So that was Jesus' prayer for himself. As you listen to that prayer as I read it, what are some things that you uh, kind of took away or stood out for you as you listen to Jesus praying for himself. Yes, Matthew. Well, he comes back to that old doubt. Speak up, speak up. He comes back to that same old thing, you know, uh, where it says uh, to give all you have... All, to give, I kind of guess you might pick up on that. To give eternal life to all, to all you have given him. So there it is again, you know. Who has eternal life? All the ones that the Father has given Jesus. Okay, and when the Father gives to Jesus, for those who have eternal life, what is required of those people? They got to repent and they got to believe. That's true, but that's the Father's action in them causing that to be. Okay. Well, some might say it's based upon his knowledge of who is going to repent and believe. And others will say, that's who's got to repent and believe those who he's given. I don't agree with that because he said, there is none that seeketh after me. No, not one. So, so no, are you one of them? I'm one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking at him, I'm looking at him tonight. But I, I, think, I, I kind of thought you might pick up on that. I, I tend to agree with Pastor Ken. He's out of the same boat I am. Yeah, but I tend to I tend to think that God already knows who's going to and who doesn't. But then he, he says knew, that has nothing he to do Jesus with it. He knew Jesus' life before he sent him here. But he that has nothing to do with it. So he knows exactly who those people are. Whosoever will. But if, but if you think about it, it says, There is none that seeketh after me, no, not one. So none of us down here well, are going to search we gotta be, for Jesus. we got to be quickened by the Spirit. That's there right. it is. The God which is part of it. Right. God has to say, I'm gonna I'm gonna get you. That's what he's gotta say. And, and 13, if he's not then, And if I'm stubborn enough, I turn my back and run. In Acts know? 13 48, it says, and all who were appointed to eternal life believed. Ah. I said, I remember saying oh, to the Lisa's saying gonna to the seven or eighteen, I said, Hey, what does this mean? Yeah. He said, Well, that's a sixty four thousand dollar Yeah, that is a sixty four thousand dollar. Lisa, what do you have to say about this? Well, 1 Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse... 1 Timothy chapter 2. Yep, verse um, 3, or we could back it up, but if you start at 3, and then... Speak up. 3 and 4, yep. it reads, This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. 
How can that be? Because we're going to spread the gospel north, south, east, and west. How but it how it can be is. I don't get. I, John I three sixteen see. says that for God so, so loved, loved the, the world, world yeah. He didn't so love the elect. It does not say for God so loved the chosen few. Really? Wait it does not say this? that. Yes, it says it for God so loved the world. We can get further along in this prayer. He's dialoguing with his father. You know, you, know something, you know something, friends? Since we don't know, as Spurgeon used to say, since we don't know who the elect are, because they don't have some identified mark down their back that we could go around pulling up shirt tails and say, ah, here's a nun, here's one. Since we don't know, it doesn't really matter because we've just been given a commission to take the gospel to everyone. Exactly. Take okay? the gospel to everyone. And, and we're not responsible for whether they receive or accept it. Our responsibility is to share and tell it. Amen. All right. God knows, God knows who's going to respond, you know, either based upon his foreknowledge or because of his predestinary will. We have to just leave it at that. What else, what other takeaways do you see in this Peter's, Peter's life? I'm just moving right along. What other, what other takeaways? You see Jesus praying that the Father would be glorified. Right? And then he, uh, the glory that he had with the Father would be realized when he's back with the Father. And he's praying that uh, I brought you into this earth to complete the task you've given me to do. But we're going to know that he wrestled all night in Gethsemane with that, with, with going forward with that task, did he not? Uh, so, um, this is just kind of a, of, of, the, of the prayers in John 17. The shortest one was the prayer he prayed for himself. And you might kind of surprise that he starts with himself, but we're going to see why there's this progression. He prays for himself first, then the disciples, then for all other believers. Lisa. It seems like in verse um, 4 and 5, basically he's, his mission is complete. His mission's accomplished. And so, and now he's asking the Father to give him back the glory that he had before he ever came to earth. Well, that's how he ended chapter 16. Take our, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. But he still isn't finished with his work because he still has to cross the cross yet. Yeah. Still has to go to the cross. Right, so it's not totally complete. But in his heart, he's... But in, yeah, he Notice how he starts his prayer. Notice how he says, the time has come. Mm -hmm. There are other times we see in the gospel that Jesus withdrew when people were, were trying to follow him for a different kind of messiahship, and he was just, it wasn't his time. He also limited himself, basically, to the house of Israel, though there were a few opportunities he had that uh, were people outside of Israel, but he primarily limited himself as the Messiah to Israel, yes, then for the whole world, but uh, the time has come. He now knows this, as he's gone We've been saying uh, on Sunday, and I'll mention it again on Sunday, as he's traveling down the Jordan River Valley to Jericho and then up to Jerusalem for the Passover, on his mind was he was going to get to Jerusalem and this is going to be the last trip uh, uh, while he's here on earth to, uh, as he went through the Passover and what was going to take place with uh, the cross. So uh, he knew the time, he knew the time was, was now. Time with the time for the reason he came, it, we, he'd reached that point. It was that point, that sense, yes. This reminds me of when Paul was finished with his, he says, I've kept, I've finished the race, I've kept, you know, kept the faith. Paul knew his own, he knew the time was he was leaving, mm -hmm. it was over. That he might give people eternal life, all those that you've given. Now, eternal life is that they may know you, the true God and Jesus Christ whom you've sent. That's how to have eternal life, to know God through Jesus Christ. Okay. So, Amen. Uh, now we're going to move to the second prayer. Jesus prayed for his disciples, and I'm going to ask each person to read two verses. This is a longer section. As Jesus prayed for those of his disciples. So we'll start over here with Kathy. Verse 6. Verse 6. I have revealed you to those whom you give, or for those who gave me out of the world. They were, you, they were yours. You gave them to me, and they obeyed your word. 
Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. Verse 8. Because the words that you gave me, I have given them. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. Verse 9. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. Yeah, Matthew wanted to read that verse. Yeah, I <laughs> definitely did. You ever back yeah. down? Okay, the next, the next verses. <clears throat> verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Verse 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. 12. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me I have kept, and none of them are lost except the son of perdition that the scripture may be fulfilled. 13, but I now, now I come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. 14. 14 and 15. Okay, there's 14. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. 16. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. 17. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. 18. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. 19. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them, so they can be made holy by your truth. All right, so that was Jesus' prayer for his disciples. Well, the college and seminary I attended had a uh, verse, John 17, 17. Your word is truth. Your word is truth. How do we know what truth is? Pilate said, you know what is truth? It's God's word. It's God's word. So, what is we learn in this passage of God's word? Really words right out of the direct of Jesus. You see them in red print here. The things that he prayed for, for his disciples. So the verses that you read, pause for a moment, reread them. What do you hear the Spirit Say to us tonight. I have no idea. Can I make a comment before everybody jumps on it? Absolutely. This is the prayer for the disciples. So when Jesus prays, those you have given me in this prayer, he's praying for the disciples that God gave him to now go out. This is not the prayer to the general, about the general public. Right. Matt. That's what I will <laughs> hope. Okay, okay, that's all right there, all right there. Oh, no. Okay, now, I Kathy, know. Kathy, what did you just say over here about the verses that you read? I said, I don't know. I, you don't know? No, because it's, it's, that's why I stumbled over it. I'm like, what? Well, I read have, it again, read it again. I have, I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. I, I, thought, that, I thought it was a misprint. They were yours. You you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Those are the disciples. He's talking about the disciples. Yeah, that's the, the twelve, and that included Judas. Now that now that they know that everything you have given me comes from you. Okay, that's one of what what tripped me up was the the, the first the first verse six. I have revealed you to those whom you you gave me out of the world. I I'm, just, yeah, I'm not buying what they just said. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was led. Remember, before he called the disciples, he spent time in prayer. And then 
then he called, and, and it seems that he did have some contact previous with them. At least that's an assumption. Uh, but but he, before he called in them, he prayed. And so he was led, he was led to select the people that were the 12. That was the 12. So beside um, their salvation, was their calling to be one of the 12 disciples who oh, then became... It who then became the 12 apostles. So somebody once said to me, what's the difference between a disciple and an apostle? Well, a disciple is a follower, an apostle is somebody who is sent. So first, they were called to follow him, to be a disciple, to follow his teachings. And then after three years of that, he returned to the Father, and then he then sends them out as his representatives, as his ambassadors or apostles. Um, so he selected people. Now I get it. He selected people. Say. Now, now I get it. Now, get it. After I read it a couple of the times. Light, the light has come on. Yeah, it has, really. It has. And I, yeah, I'm a blonde, yeah. No. <laughs> I have. Re I she have said that, I did. Yeah. Well, he, okay, so he's, he's, praying to, he, you know, he's praying to the disciples. I have revealed you. You, you as God. Yeah. You as the Father. The Father. You, yeah. I, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yeah. To those whom you... you you gave me out of the world. Those are the disciples. Yeah. They were yours. They were first yours, and now you have given them to me. Because yeah. they, he, they all he met them on on his travels, and they all decided to travel with him. Yeah. You gave them. You gave them to me. You gave them to me, and they and they. God knew them, them before they were called. Yeah. And he called them because the Father directed him. Yeah. To call. Them. And they obeyed your word. Oh, I, I like that. See? And now, and now they know, and they, being the apostles, disciples, and they have obeyed your word, and and they know that they recognize that what you he was sharing was yeah. was coming from God. Yep. Okay, we already got. See, it'll come to, It came to me. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's why we have Bible study. You know, um, going for a little bit deeper, deeper level, deeper understanding. All right. Uh, who is next? Me. Uh, verse. Eight. Oh, yeah. yeah, because the words that you gave me, I have given them. They have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. They have believed that you sent me. Verse 9, I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, because they are yours. So this prayer now is a guided, directed prayer for these 12. He wasn't praying for, we'll see later, other believers or the whole world, but he's praying for these 12 that he's about to turn things over to after, of course, his death on the cross and his then his resurrection and then his ascension. He's praying for them, but especially as they're coming to this crisis period where their leader is going to be crucified. And you remember, they all, they all fled. One betrayed him, one denied him. They all fled except John. Only John followed Jesus all the way to the cross. So he's praying for them for these days ahead, especially, I think, uh, that uh, the Lord would, would be with them in that time. Any other thoughts? Go ahead. Well, one thing in verse 8, he says, because the words that you gave me, I have given them. Um, just that Jesus didn't just speak his own words, even though he was God. Right. He spoke the words the Father gave him. He made that clear on a number of occasions. And then, of course, they received the word. They received the word, they obeyed it. Which, that's a big deal. I mean, we can value God's word and receive it, or we can just treat God's word like it's it's nice for every Sunday and Wednesday, but the rest of the week, let's really get some important information from the TV or whatever. <laughs> we don't have to value, you know, we don't, we, 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 we <coughs> you know, God's word is the words of God. For and so, and they receive true them like followers that. of Jesus. The word of God is the word of God. 
So Lisa is basically saying, church on Sunday, devil on Monday, huh? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, I just was thinking about the Word of God recently, and these are the words from God. Yeah, that's and, and, of course, we're privileged to have them we don't, and to have a copy and not have to go to a concentration camp like in North Korea. And, that's and, why and whenever die in 10 years. scriptures are read, it's the most important part of the service because it's actual, the actual words, words of God. Right. I get excited when I see red letters in the Bible. Yeah. And then it goes on. It says, and then it says that I came from you. Well, obviously, the word is from God and is truth, but Jesus is the truth made flesh. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. So we can't, there's another verse that says we can be ever learning and never coming to the truth. There's truth. We can study and study and be so genius, but we can completely... You know, not turned to. Not I'm impressed that while Jesus started out praying for himself, it was to basically glorify God. But now he's praying for them. Um, he's the one going to the cross. But he knew that the fact that that would happen then. Yeah. And he's praying for them. <coughs> yeah. He's praying for them, the disciples. All right, next. Who's next? Uh, that was me. Um, and in uh, verse 10. He's recognizing that all of his father, followers are followers of God and that they've taken all the lessons that he's given him and uh, he is mutually glorified with God through them. And then in 11, he goes on, I'm no more in, in the world. So he's recognizing he's leaving the world, but he's leaving these people behind and he wants the Holy Father to keep them in a, a symbiotic relationship the way Jesus and the Holy Father have, as one, and keep them working together. And you see the unit there between he and the Father, when he's right. saying, all I have is yours and all you have is mine. Right, the unity. It's kind of like... Some people think all of yours is mine and all of mine is mine. That's not, that's not how Jesus is praying, is it? That's not how Jesus is praying. And back to the glory. Glory has come to me through them. And it's also recognizing the oneness of them. I, this sort of stood out to me again today. And glory has come to me through them. Yeah. Um, rather than saying glory has come to me, glory has come to them through me. He's saying, glory has come to me through them. Why? Because they're the ones that he called, God directed him to call them. And as they then followed him, um, the glory of God is then manifested in but them. He also recognized their, um, their friendship as well. Yeah. And in some ways that gives you some mm -hmm. feeling of... And, you know, three of them were with him on the Mount Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John. There, Peter, James, and John. And uh, one of them, John, was especially uh, uh, his beloved, close, close disciple. All right, Alan. Verse 12. Uh, I was with them in the world, but kept them in your name. Those whom you gave me, I have kept. None of them were lost except the son of perdition, which is obviously Judas Iscariot, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So basically, he said... Those that started following him from the beginning were still with him, and that God will, that God the Father will keep them when he returns to heaven, except for Judas, right? Obviously, so he's saying that God the Father will, will continue to make, maintain or hold on to the, 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 the disciples. I have given them your word, fourteen. Oh no, but thirteen. Sorry, thirteen. But now I have come to you, and these things I speak in the world, that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Uh, it's a little confusing. He's saying, I go back to the Father, but these things I speak in the world. But he's not speaking, what things is he talking about? I'm not clear, what, I guess what, I'm unclear as to what things he's, he's re referring to in that verse, specifically, because he's praying to his Father right now. From I understand, this is this is a private prayer between Jesus and the Father. So I don't know what he, what, what things he's speaking into the to the world. He's not 
unless he's talking about just overall his message, the gospel message. I mean, I'm a little unclear as to, as to what, what he's referring to there. Uh, well, he's, he's praying that, that God would protect them and keep them okay. safe uh, in this time. Right. Uh, and he's recognizing that uh, there's only going to be one that is going to be lost. And that one uh, was a result of, yeah, that person's actions, but it was a fulfillment of scripture. Well, <clears throat> even though it's Jesus praying to the Father, I'm assuming that he's praying in front of the disciples. Well, that's, yeah, because John obviously recorded obviously, this. That's true. That's so true. when he refers to these things, I think you can go back to the end of the previous chapter. Those are the things he's talking about. Where it says, <clears throat> I have told you these things so that you may have peace. All right, let's move on. Uh, who's next? Me. All right. Uh, I have given them your word in the world to say to them, well, you know, when you get the word of God in you, you know, the world doesn't want to know you anymore. I mean, uh, you know how many friends have alienated me? Plenty of them. You well, know, I've, I've heard in conversations the last uh, week, a couple people that basically dismissed anything I was saying because you know I was just saying some religious stuff. You know, it's just just my religious beliefs. And uh, this one person basically said, you know, you you just you just uh, you just religious stuff. You just ought to stick to your religious stuff. But what else do you know? <laughs> you know. When I listen to the words, I said, you know what? I used to like these, you know, a lot of bands that I can't listen to them anymore. We still go to concerts and listen but to music. I, I do I not. Mean, you know something? I'm telling you what's going on in my heart, all right? There's, there's groups like, you know what? I won't listen to U2 anymore. I still love U2, but now they're so pro abortion, I can't go yeah, there. Bono, I won't listen to Bono, this. I won't listen to any of their music. But I do. I want to out as I go. You watch out for the words because the words and music are very powerful. They are. And listen to me. You know, with the uh, music. Now, I know somebody said, I never listen to the words. I just can get the music. But you know? sing along. But the words, what, what, what makes a religious song a religious song? It's, it's the lyrics. It's the lyrics. There's all different kinds of music. But what makes something Christian is the is the words, mm -hmm. uh, and you you can have sort of certain preference. Some like gospel, some like country, some like rock. You know, well, but what makes it religious is the words, and if it's the words of the Lord, God's word put in the music, either the direct words itself or a testimony experience from those words, that's what makes something Christian. Yeah. Um. Back to the person that says, oh, I don't listen to the words. I just, you know, enjoy the music. Say, well, okay, I'll, I'll give you a CD with some hymns on it. Then all of a sudden they might, maybe they'll take it, maybe they won't. I think, I, I, I still go back to when people are reacting to you that way from a religious standpoint, it's more of them feeling less educated of it and having taken the time to really discover it on their own. Yeah, but you know, it's not just music. It, it's no, I'm saying you know, I'm like listening to you. Well, it's, 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 if it's, 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 if it's religious it's music, if it's religious music, it's, it's the words. But it could be any message of the that includes the word. And uh, the world today doesn't want to hear that because right. it's it doesn't fit with their their philosophy or their th thinking and uh, so you're going to have this conflict between uh, God's word, God, spiritual things that are truth and you know what 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 people think from human nature or from the world itself. Like you know what St. Patrick's Day, you know, I didn't really go out, but I didn't party and all of that, you know, and they go, yeah, I'm an Irish man or you. 
So I, I'm not surprised when the world rejects or reacts to it. Although sometimes uh, people react to it and, and then they come out of conviction. Because yeah, God the, uses the word. Yeah, that's the scripture. God uses the word. And other times it's uh, their their reaction to it and hardening their hearts to it is what uh, basically ends up damning them because it hardens their resistance to it, rejection of it, it's what hardens their heart. That's what I see the scripture saying. You know, so, uh, you because you know yeah. you should get closer to Jesus and you start to go his way. But all these other things start going away from you, or you're, you're having a reaction. The Holy Spirit's doing a battle with you. You know what I mean? I, I find this happening in my life. I tell you, that's not, right, man. They are not of the world any more than I am in the world. Right. I'm yeah. saying to Deb, you know, today, as, as things go by uh, and wax from worse to worse, more and more I, be, I feel like back in my days, uh, growing up in Lancaster and seeing the old order Amish. Or the Orthodox Jews, I feel about that strange today, as a born again Christian in the world that is getting further and further away from what you know, what used to be common things that were thought and believed and understood, because a, a lot of our culture back then was you know more Bible Bible based. Today, people don't know it, or they do know it. Many times choose to reject it because again it doesn't fit with what they want to believe and so on, and uh, just understand that's what's going on. That's what's happening. In the midst of that, there are moments where you plant a seed, and ten years later yeah. they get saved. That's and what I said earlier. Sometimes, there's people, sometimes there's yeah. other people sometimes that are really hungry. So, you know, God, um, it's all it's. Think of Sometimes. how the Apostle Paul, he thought he was doing God's work, trying to stamp out the church. Okay, so let's move on. The next, uh, who was, who's next? Um, I don't know, Matt. Did you? I finished it. Well, that was my point. Who has verse 15? Matt does. I do. <laughs> you notice my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but you protect them from the evil one in the world. <laughs> right, right. So... Uh, you know, he's not asking God to, to remove us. He's asking God to protect us and give us joy in the fight. But here's here's what I, here's my question. He says, "Protect okay. them." From, what does that mean exactly? Because all the everyone with John were martyred, yeah. so they were too protected. Well, in protect some them ways. until it's their time. What's that? Protect them until it's their time. <laughs> they were what? protected uh, until they work. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, that's to give us an, a, a, an idea of how we all end. That's a good point. Uh, <laughs> and they got promoted. You know, <laughs> all the people that are martyred, at some point in time, the protection is removed. And, uh, they're, they're now with the Lord. Do you think right? that goes for all of us to, in here today as um, an example? Well, let's just keep praying that uh, we're under his protection. I do. And, <laughs> I and, and uh, if not, we're just ushered into glory. All right. So, uh, who, who's next? Peter? <laughs> Peter. Apostle Peter is next. <laughs> Short and sweet. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. So, he's saying that the disciples yeah. um, are, are with him and should be considered... Um, Just recognizing that. Just recognizing yeah. that fact. And then sanctify them in the truth. What's the what's that fifty cent word mean? Sanctify. Sanctify. Make them holy. Set them apart. Them holy. Set apart. Made holy. Yeah. Set apart. And how we set apart through the truth through your word. Right. And what is the truth? God's word. That's how God sanctifies and sets us apart. Right. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not as controversial as Matt's. I'm kind of upset that my school, uh, which for 100 years went by that slogan, uh, changed it to now saying Christian University like no other. Uh, to me, that doesn't in any way compare with thy word is truth. That's marketing. Like that, no that's other. Why everything is marketing. It's softened. It's softened for acceptance. And by the way, EMU is not any out. different in Goshen, so I have to say that. It's, it's really disgusting. Right. Anyway, so it's I'm, I'm very disappointed. Disgusting. 
the sales tool. The minor is still there with the letters on it, but that's not what's, it was always, that was always in all the literature. It was always in all the literature. Thy word is truth. Uh, I like the fact that in our service, somebody brings the Bible up and it's placed up there on the altar. We read a scripture, we have a sermon based upon God's word. And, um, you know, it's God's word. I would like to see people following along a little bit more. Uh, you know, I'm used to hearing pages flip on that. Uh, but uh, uh, people listen good, I'll say that, because if I tell a joke or something, they all, they, I immediately get a response. I know people are listening. I don't hear too many amens, uh, but uh, in some traditions you have that, you know, you got the amens coming out. Uh, but um, anyway, it's God's word. Now, Mary Claire, you got the last, the last verses here. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world, and I give myself as a holy sacrifice for them so that they can be made holy by your truth. So he's uh, talk, telling to the Father that, you know, even uh, just as he brought him into this world, bringing him down from heaven, he's sending them out now because he brought his son down to... Uh, share the word, share God's love, and now he's going to wants to send out the disciples to be basically salt and light um, in his absence once he goes to the cross and goes back to heaven. I find it interesting where he said, I sanctify myself, I set myself apart, that they too may be then, my disciples, be sanctified and set apart. Because he's getting ready to turn things Turn things over again. That's Jesus' prayer for. Oh, we got to move on here. Uh, I realize the time is getting away from us. Yeah, man. So we might go on overtime, folks. The only way we're watching you kind of game was a double overtime. That really sad. <laughs> all right. Uh, Jesus' prayer for all believers. And uh, we just read a verse here. Uh, we'll go around and start with Dave. <clears throat> my, <clears throat> my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Peter, 21. 21. That they may all be one, even as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that thou didst send me. 22. I have given them the glory you gave me, so they may be one as we are one. 23. In them, in you and me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. And they behold my glory which you have given me. For you have loved me before the foundation of the world. 25. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee. And these have known that thou hast at least sent me. Thou hast sent me. 26. I made your name known to them and will make it known. So the love you have loved me with may be in them, and I may be in them. Okay. One of the principal things that comes through Jesus' prayer for the disciples and his prayer there for all believers, including us, what was on Jesus' heart the night before he was crucified, is that they be one. The disciples be one, and that all those other believers would be one. The unity of Jesus' followers was something that was very much on his mind before he was, of course, going to the cross. I've just been thinking back over the years that I've been in the ministry, the things that the devil's always trying to divide the church in some form or another. It was cooperative evangelism in the ecumenical movement. 
and then it was the charismatic movement, and then it was the religious wars, uh, religious worship wars, okay? Uh, and now it's the LGBT2 and all the rest of the alphabet. And it's always something that is dividing the church. Rather than being focused and centered on Jesus, the devil uses these other things to divide us. Why? The old thing of divide and conquer. Exactly. You get the Christians fighting among themselves, they're not going out into the world with the gospel. And missing the point of who Jesus really is, the Savior that he is, and that we ought to be focused on him and the word, not the things that divide. I'm very blessed in the years that I've been a pastor. The churches that I've pastored, by and large, have not had division issues. Every now and then, you know, somebody gets a little bit out of sort or something. Uh, but uh, we always are looking to keep, keep the group together. And I'm thankful for the unity that we have. And we don't all need to dot eyes across our T's. We got to leave room for people to grow to grow in grace and see things a little differently. Maybe the way we see things, or maybe we see things the way they're going to see things. But uh, let's stay focused on who Jesus is and the mission. That's what Jesus was praying for here, for his disciples and praying for all the other believers, is that they may be one. Um, we're going to leave it at that. We're going to go to chapter 18 next week. So your assignment for next week is to read, go through chapter 18. And you might want to reread chapter 17 this week as well, just while we're in chapter 17, and especially to see what was on Jesus' heart, his mind, and his concern for, you, for the disciples and for the believers to stay unified. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together tonight in your word, this period of time that we're in Lent. Uh, we thank you for this church. We thank you for its faithfulness down through the years of your word and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ here in the West Shore of Milford and in reaching out to our community and the world. May that continue to be the case. Keep us unified in the person and mission of Christ. We also pray for all our families in our church, um, our marriages, our children. We ask um, just for your blessing and your comfort and your peace. And we also pray for uh, those in Ukraine. Uh, we ask that they would be protected and that this war would dissipate and uh, just, you know, stop. And um, we thank you, God, for your love. I wanted to pray for all of my friends. Um, it's about a comment that Matt made earlier. Many of my friends who are getting closer to you, God, are feeling more isolated and separated from the rest of the world. I pray that you give them the protection they need to go out and be amongst the world more often. Um, I know that a lot of people are feeling rather good about going forward in certain parts of their life. But be with them, protect them, let them know that you love them no matter what. And that's just something we all may, may need at times. Lord, I pray that the people that uh, heard your word on Saturday and again on Tuesday in those services, memorial and funeral services, there's uh, some, I'm sure there were certainly some, not prepared uh, for eternity, that uh, the word shared would uh, indeed uh, achieve bringing them to faith. And uh, ask your blessing upon our gathering on Sunday as we gather around your Lord's table. And as we look forward to the next week, Palm Sunday, and the musical, uh, sharing the gospel in the musical. And we ask to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So, so in closing, uh, if you're listening uh, online, you can give online. Dave, explain how that works. <clears throat> go to the church website and go to giving. Okay. And in the drop-down box, you'll find Ukraine Relief. All right, Ukraine Relief. Or you can show up on Sunday. We have the jar, other things. 
And of course, we're doing this above and beyond our regular support uh, because it's time of sacrifice uh, during Lent. As we're saving all this money for these tips, <laughs> saving all this to be able to share and to do uh, God's work. So God bless. Have a good rest of the week.